Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another disc guidance segment from 2MK. This content is being rebroadcast from my own Rillian 2 underscore MK channel to the main 2 underscore MK channel with my full permission. Twitch is being a little strange today, so if we drop, just give us a bit to resolve any technical difficulties that we can we managed to resolve from our side. So, we covered Rashid's development as a potential kata in the last set stream. And this week, we will be giving you the finished version of that kata, having looked through, done a bunch of research on various characters and so on. You should be able to get everything you need from just this stream, but the content will be released on Sunday at around 6 Eastern, 7 Eastern. With that said, therefore, this is CPU style kata. Level 7 or 8 for Rashid is fine. And I'll be demonstrating with my own main characters, given that it is relatively an advanced kata. So let's get right into it. There's certain things mentioned before that you have to understand about Rashid that make this kata useful and possible. I'm going to go through them one at a time because they're fairly complicated if you're not familiar with the character and things you might not have noticed if you are. So CPU Rashid has certain tendencies and patterns, a bit more so than others if you're defending or even if you're not defending all that hard, you'll just still do particular things. He has a relatively simplistic game plan, for the CPU anyway. So as for Kata, the main thing you're trying to do at first is remember to anti-air. Now Rashid tends to jump after very specific actions on his side. Mostly, he will jump if he does a spinning mixer at you and it whiffs, like that. And he may jump after sticking out a couple buttons or whirlwinds in neutral. If you don't move in certain ways, or if you stand in certain ways. He also has some moments where he jumps when you've hit him, but you're not really concerned about that for the kata. Your main focus should be, Rashid is doing moves, and he's either going to neutral jump, or do a standard forward jump, and those are the ones you care about. He also jumps occasionally after certain other things that you should have been punishing, but as I mentioned, those aren't really the point of the kata. You're meant to, to watch particular things. So for the beginning, for the first aim, you should generally just be watching for when Rashid does spinning mixer, and then you watch for a moment to see if he jumped or not. He also does it after that standing medium kick you've just seen, and you should generally look out for that as well. And a little bonus for when he's just like sitting there blocking, but the spacing is correct. This may be a little bit hard for people who don't have their anti-airs down on a new character, and of course we have various bots for that to help you build up your anti-airs. But if you're confident in your anti-airs as a general executional thing, and as a spacing thing, you know what to hit, you know where to hit it, and you can generally manage to hit it in time, on the physical level, then the problem becomes, can you react to seeing it amidst a bunch of other things. Depending on how you move against Rashid, he will also do certain jump spacings, but they're about the same as everything else he's doing. 
he occasionally jumps straight up, which is useful because that means he gets to be confusing about it. You can't just wait until he leaves the ground. You have to care whether or not he jumped forward or not. So in Chili's case, I'm going to use the standard back heavy kick anti-air instead of her standing leg kick for various reasons which I will show later and are part of another aspect of the kata. My main goal therefore is to identify those moments where Rashid might jump and move from my crouching position to a standing position hit back heavy kick and anti-air. I'm actually not supposed to anti-air when he does a different type of going into the air using his V-Skill, but obviously, like everything else, one has to get used to doing that or not doing it. You should also move around to see if you can make him jump. Because a lot of it, as I said, turns out to be spacing related. And as you know, he won't always do it. You do have to confirm that he did do the jump after the spinning mixer. But, given Rashid's movements, he's nearly never going to be close enough to hurt you for that exact moment afterwards. So you can generally focus on the idea that you are watching for the jump and then not doing anything if he did not jump. You'll note that most of the time, if Rashid has done Spinning Mixer and clipped you, he will not jump. And you can try various other punishes if you have anything useful, given that that move is minus two even at its best. Just basically hit some standing medium or in Chun-Li or Ryu's case, heavy punch button. I don't think many characters have a heavy kick where this works. Now of course, this is just to get you used to looking for that and give you the feeling that this is fairly easy. Until you can find that easy, Obviously, you should not move on to the next step of the kata. Because he also has that ability and you have to be careful of it, but most of the time you don't actually care if he does that. As you can see, the gauges for this particular kata are that you get all of your meter, which you can remove if you so desire to make yourself do a different, harder part later. But it's an anti-air, you don't care. For some people, you might actually want to do it with full meter to make sure that your anti-airs aren't going to turn into EX moves or supers when you don't want them and so on. Rashid's meters are normal because you don't want him constantly doing the same things he will get certain things replaced by those if you let him. The other thing you end up learning, which is not specifically part of the kata, is a matter of ranges for the character in general, and therefore you can use it to help with new characters. But the initial aim is to anti-air Rashid. And the situation in which you do this, this is achieved by looking for his stand medium kick and slightly expecting him to jump following it if it whiffed. Generally he doesn't jump if he hit with it. He might jump if he hit with other things, but most of the time he does not jump if he hit with the stand medium kick in neutral. He'll do it after like a long sequence. So far we found anyway. And if he whiffs the spinning mixer, 
He also obviously jumps when he's been hit a certain number of times and put into a particular space, which is perfect for our purposes. Because obviously one is also learning to anti-air people who jump as a recovery. Another fortunate thing of this for situation 1 is that Rashid actually doesn't jump that often because those three situations in which he jumps, namely having been throw attacked or hit and the other mentioned, don't necessarily come up that often. If you sit in Rashid's pressure, he won't actually do this. And of course, as noted, he has some other ones that you're not supposed to anti-air that he'll throw in there, as well as his neutral jumps. So you do have enough to think about watching Rashid constantly and having all of this information put through your mind with a lot of things that are capable of making you twitch before it's time to actually anti-air. The more you try to avoid twitching like this, the harder it will be to anti-air at the moment you actually have to do it. And depending on your character, this may be a big problem. If your anti-air is very specific or you have multiple anti-airs based on range or similar, it might be hard to get the right one in time when your mind is set on all those other things. This kata is also meant to teach about something very important we will call the after image effect, but this level of it, this first situation, is not presenting enough data to you to force that yet. If you find that you're anti-airing incorrectly because your character has a lot of different anti-airs, then it might be affecting you, but for most people, it's not really doing anything. If you have a good single anti-air, rely on that and don't worry about the fact that it doesn't feel very hard. At this phase, it generally shouldn't. If you want to make it a little harder on yourself, you can go for some air resets if you have one of those, as I said, single anti-airs that hits like stand medium punch or something and just pop up in the air a little bit. If you have one of those and have a good air reset that follows it, Go ahead and try to make yourself make sure you do that. It will teach you some stuff about how high you hit your opponent, which resets you get when you hit them high in the air, when you reacted quickly, those sorts of things. But that is not the core of the kata. We have bots and other situations to teach you how to perfect your air resets. But again, if it's feeling easy because your character's anti-airs are consistent, no problem. If you use a special to anti-air and are managing, also no problem. But adding the air reset just adds another little confirm you have to do. The next situation involves dealing with some of Rashid's other moves. And that's where the after image is going to come in because we're going to introduce an altogether different thing that you need to do while under his pressure. And you need to look for this different thing at slightly different times as well. Rashid will be moving quickly from one state to the other and you have to keep up with him. Which brings us to aim B. And, of course, also the situation too. Rashid will very occasionally hit sweep. He also hits crouch medium kick. He does neither of these things very often, especially not if you are in his pressure already. Plus he cancels the crouch medium kick when he does. So you only care about 
the sweep when it is blocked, and the crouch medium kick when it whiffs. Both of these things are very, very rare occurrences. Rashid's sweep is, like most in the game, very unsafe. Crouch medium kick is relatively minus, to the point where he most likely can't stick out another button, if, especially if he whiffed it. You should be able to punish it probably with your own crouch medium kick. Or with punish it with that, because he tends to stick out a fairly large hurt box. Therefore, keeping all of that in mind, you simply continue to end here. Your focus should be on the anti-air. But do watch out for that part of it. This is particularly true for characters who tend to not crouch block and tend to walk away from Rashid as you've just seen. For various reasons, both backdash and walk back on very fast movement speed characters are quite effective at getting away from Rashid's pressure when he's reached the near the end of it. You can literally just walk out of certain things. If you're aware enough of when he will roll, that's entirely possible for quite a few characters. And if you do walk back, he's more likely to cause all of these things I've mentioned to happen. The jump, the weird space stand medium kick, the whiffing crouch medium kick, all of these things happen more often when you are walking away from Rashid for long periods. So, that can be considered situation 2. Since most characters who have really good the airs from these positions, other than Guile, don't actually need to crouch block to do them. And, character generally could walk. You can feel free to just do that. It could be a good way to get your walk speed as well. It helps you understand when you must crouch block because you're too close to him to just walk away. Or to bat dash. I believe my mind probably reset it. So I'll repeat that. When you're walking away from a character, you do not need to and it Alright, it seems that our Twitch issues are a little bit more toward the performance side right now. So we're gonna wait that out a little bit. Probably all of this wind. And of course, the team will let me know when I can fully resume explaining. Alright, we are good to go, and I will of course repeat that section. You can note that Rashid's pressure for faster characters
can be walked out of. While Rashid's crouch medium kick is good, there are not a whole ton of ranges at which he easily converts from it. If he's already pressuring you in some other way, this bot at least, this CPU, does not often manage to clip you with that. And when he does, he loses out on a lot of other things as well. So, you can absolutely walk away from Rashid, and usually characters will not have to worry too much about failing anti-air because of walking away from him. If you find anti-airing difficult while walking away, this is itself something to work on, and therefore part of situation two. When Rashid either therefore whiffs his kick, or you do happen to walk away, you quickly change to crouch blocking again, and he does his sweep, which is extremely rare, focus on punishing those. But above all else, walk away from Rashid and get used to the idea of whiff punishing longer buttons he sticks out to try to catch you walking away. Characters with slower walk speed obviously don't have this option, but you can back dash out of a lot of Rashid. He doesn't really have that many pace moves that you won't have capacity. So if you can't walk back, Situation 2 is about learning the situations in which you can backdash. Or the tornado part. Spends jumping as well. Also, change range, he's more likely to whiff the spinning mixer. Since bat dashes are airborne, it also sets up a couple other little things that are not relevant to the kata, but you can learn stuff about your character. Now obviously we don't want Rashid to just take up space all the time while we're bat dashing away from him. But it does stop a lot of his pressure from actually being full pressure. If you have invincible moves or very quick reactions. You can still get some stuff off it. But you will also note that there's a lot of times when this causes his sweep to be spaced such a way that it's difficult to punish. There are a lot of little spacing things that come in. You should be used to having various reactions after your bat dash from the other katas in this series. So, he's a good progression from there, recognizing I can bat dash out of this, and then I can do stuff after that bat dash, just like all the others in this series. The difficulty is in this case, it's harder to tell when to bat dash if you're not familiar with either Rashid's frame data, spacing, or your character. But if your character can't bat dash in time, their bat dash is bad in some way, or they're just too slow on walk speed. Fortunately, we do have a way to cover most of that. Most characters who cannot bat dash out of it also have some longer normals they can use to poke at Rashid 
or some parry or counter that they can do in approximately the same spacing and timing that they would backdash. The difficulty in those things is that you have to confirm that Rashid has not done certain other attacks first before you move to this. For characters like Bison and Ryu and Alex who can just flatly parry and not have to care about it. The situation is a little bit better than, for example, Colleen. But Colleen does have one other thing she can execute that solves the problem somewhat. The difficulty here is that Colleen, Zaku, characters like that, you have to do this fairly early. You can't generally wait until Rashid has decided to make his cancel. And that means you have to be doubly ready for some other things right after doing it. This is where you'll start to see the first effects of the after image I mentioned. If you are forced to execute something fairly difficult, or even just a parry, your mind will often be on trying to time that. And as soon as your mind is put into a situation where it must try to time something, you're likely to focus on it. Once you focus, you're likely to do it in situations where you weren't supposed to, that have nothing to do with the situation in question. Furthermore, there are many situations where characters like Colleen will only manage to actually punish Rashid for doing things if they are quite confident or fast on certain situations. And once you do that, it becomes harder to focus on your anti-air. It also becomes harder to focus on punishing the sweep when it happens. All of that, therefore, is an explanation of what the core of Situation 2 is. But there is a hidden part of this, and that hidden part of this is what creates Situation 3. It's not very obvious and it does differ by character, but Rashid does different things sometimes triggered by what position you were holding on the pad or stick at the moment you did it. If you are holding a particular way, Rashid's pressure continues. If you try to move away from him, as mentioned for situation 2, he's more likely to try weird things, try different things, or jump. Now this is obviously not applicable to actual players, but what is applicable to those players is the delay in response that you need to have in order to force this to happen. The CPU, as we are fairly aware, effectively cheats and reads your inputs. Now, this is not always helpful because there are moves in the game that are definitely fast enough to take advantage of this regardless if the computer thinks, well, they're holding down back so I'm going for this thing, but you happen to jab and the jab would beat whatever they wanted, you still win. You don't care.
but understanding this is helpful for realizing when you have stuck yourself in a particular position for too long because you're trying to cause a certain thing to happen. It is also particularly useful when you recognize that sometimes you need to crouch block Rashid and sometimes you really want to be ready to anti-air, which for not every person is a quick switch. You're likely to get hit by a jump in, his jump ins are quite good after all, if you don't come out of your crouch block in time to go to regular stand and block. And of course, if you're simply not aware enough, the whole thing falls apart. On top of all this, you have to get out of the corner. Situation 3 involves Rashid's tendency when you are holding a particular thing at a particular spacing. One of his strings, he ends with his overhead. Fortunately, it does not generally follow tornadoes. Or rather, it does not come at the time when he would have cancelled into tornadoes. He's more likely to do the tornado first, and then go for it. Especially if you are closer to the corner. As you can see, there's usually a little run involved in it, so you could jab him out of this, as mentioned before. And, at that point, the CPU can do very little about it. So you're waiting for Rashid to put himself at a particular spacing. Probably one where you could clip him. And one where he might jump, but doesn't have to because he can reach with the overhead itself. The situation is both to try to block that overhead, or stop it in some way, and to recognize what it was that caused him to try to do it. Against certain characters, he does it more often, because they have less ways to stop it, or so we assume. We're not absolutely sure why at this point, but we have done extensive tests to verify that there are particular characters who Rashid will overhead more than others. But in general, for all characters, once Rashid has either hit you with his stand heavy kick, which you blocked and did not respond to in any way, or has hit you with a fairly far out heavy whirlwind, which didn't respond to in any way, there's a chance that that is coming fairly soon. It does depend at least somewhat on his spacing which is a good thing to learn, but it is also partially random. One easy way to look for it if you're not really thinking about anything else is the fact that he tends to do it when his medium kick hits you at max range and you were crouch blocking. But these are not specific things you need to remember about Rashid. The main thing you care about is knowing he will do this overhead, and he doesn't do it just like, oh, I see you crouch, so I'm going for it. The end of a sequence that you probably forget. You spent too long in one position, or wiggling around, moving back and forth, and now you're going to get overheaded. It's going to drive me crazy that that is a high counter. So once again, situation 3 is primarily about watching for and dealing with Rashid's overhead because this is a minus 6 move and you should be able to get a good punish because the positions he does it in 
he either tends to whiff because you started to walk backward again, it takes quite long after all, or you walk backward at the last moment and he's still within range to actually be punished. So once again, if his medium kick hits and he's not in range to do any other move, he will overhead. If his medium kick whiffs and he's in the range for the overhead barely, he often overheads. If he's not, you might have to deal with a whirlwind or a jump. That stand medium kick is a tell for a lot of things he does. You can almost always predict what he will do with accuracy based on the range you are at after he has whiffed it. But of course, After Image makes you focus on all of these different things and not necessarily be ready for all of them. It's easy to do this sort of thing when you're on offense and just have to land a hit and proceed from there. But the point of the kata is to perfect your defense. So, you have to constantly be thinking, should I get out of the way of this? Should I be expecting a jump? Should I be waiting for an overhead and managing to stand block that overhead? Or am I too close and will I get swept if I try to do that right there? And since all of these things on nearly every character have vastly different responses required, it is quite often true that you will find yourself doing the thing that is intended to stop the last thing you were thinking about, or punish the last thing you were thinking about, instead of whatever it is that Rashid actually did. And what you're training is to minimize that effect. Even worse is that he will sometimes be able to jump at a cross-up range if you aren't ready. And catch you in ways that you have to respond to even more quickly. For characters with parries or good clips in neutral, you can also note that he tends to do his neutral jump into another button rather than anything else. In this case, we're counting as Light Spinning Mixer as another option there, but it has the same effect when you're trying to power things. In fact, it's even better because it tends to bring him closer, not too much. Since that move is minus two, you can often do a parry style motion right after it if it clips you, or parry it on the way in if you expect it. And you don't lose out because if you were going to parry anyway, it's probably not going to affect you. The final part of Rashid has to do with identifying his whirlwinds and his heavy kick. These two things are related for a reason that's difficult to explain without showing it off. So I'm going to switch back to Chun-Li in order to do that. Colleen has some good options for it, but they are very Colleen specific and relatively hard to execute. So I would rather be able to demonstrate it, as I have not trained this kata with Rashid yet myself either. That character. And we have moved to a darker stage for the sake of making it clearer what the whirlwinds are doing. If you find it becomes too easy, play it in a lighter stage where it's harder to see the whirlwinds clearly. Hillside Plaza is one of the better ones. Forgotten Waterfall, also useful. Union Station can be a little helpful. Much of whirlwinds, and less of a perfect view of Rashid due to the lighting in the stage. Trade-offs. 
In any case, our main focus here is situation four, which is not necessarily putting everything together. Situation four, which is related to AMD. AMD is not about whirlwinds. If you want to learn to power your whirlwinds and deal with them and move through them and all those things, that can be worked into just your own practice or technically considered to be part of aim C. AMD is about punishing a particular thing Rashid does. That isn't always punishable and is relatively difficult to punish, but not impossible because it's a poor move. Rashid stand heavy kick. An overhead looking hop is minus. Therefore, whenever he uses this move, he should be able to be hit if you were fairly close to him. But too often. So once again, you find yourself looking at all this other stuff. And eventually, Rashid might manage to get enough space to do this. So, since I've been told that the stream is being a little choppy with the audio again, if you can still hear it clearly enough to hear this, I'll just demonstrate for a while rather than talking about it because this one is fairly easy to see. Fortunately, it's difficult to get an optimal punish, partially because of range. She does have some very specific stuff that helps. But for the most part, you have to learn a slightly different combo. And this is actually true for a fair number of characters who have a 4 frame who have multiple 4 frame normals. The one that you need to use for this particular task is not always the one you think it is because of pushback differences. In Chen Li's case, for example, even though her crouch light punch leads into more stuff, and you would not think that hitting her crouch light kick first would therefore be required, if you do it, different things happen. And this is true for, again, many characters. You can further notice, of course, that the more I do this, the harder it becomes to actually do the anti-air part. If I'm focused on waiting for that heavy kick, which he does very rarely, it's unlikely that I'm going to be as ready for all of the other things I'm supposed to be dealing with. And the neutral jump distracts because I'm watching for the air movement by itself. I'm not watching to see which air movement happened. But 
overall, once you have reached this point, Rashid tends to either have to do the sweep or the heavy kick. react to them all. It is a strong demonstration of how understanding is not enough by itself and practice can often be required to get good results. But I'm going to start walking backward from him again because it does increase the amount of time he does this as well. Once he does do it, I will be trying to demonstrate her crouching light punch effect. First of all, as we know from many, many lessons from many, many players, it is relatively harder to confirm off one light than two. Which means that in the optimal situation, Chun-Li has to go into her other combo, which is, if you're not familiar, basically crouching light into stand medium, and so on. being that depending on what you were doing and how much pushback you were ready for that medium punch may not connect and if it does what is supposed to follow it may not connect making it required to use meter to get a very basic punish and that means that Rishi gets to hit that heavy kick for free more often the computer being able to read your inputs is actually useful for your training. Normally it would be bad because you're attacking and the opponent knows to use a fast button to counter you. But since Rashid is the one on the offense and his moves are not that fast, and you're not often in range to be messed up by those moves just by him happening to read your inputs, you do get a bit more out of it. He's one of the main characters against whom your defensive ability is not too compromised by the fact that the CPU can read your inputs. The things he's using are a little too slow to be sure shots on what you're doing. But yes, amidst all that, we have our extremely rare version of that move and you have to manage a very quick response to it. Now for some characters this is just like a uh, light sure you can or something but even then it's still relatively hard because the after image will then to do that which is a relatively unsafe move in other situations where it's not as good an idea. Like punishing sweep for example. Having the two of them on similar situations and timings means you are often going to find yourself doing Light Sure You Can against the sweep instead. Which doesn't even always work because he's quite far out when he does the sweep. Whereas the spacing for the heavy kick and the 
and the sweep are similar all out of the time. Only one of them brings him close enough that you counter though. So you can't just go using your quick buttons to counter the sweep as well. You'll whiff, and depending on the button, you may end up getting hurt for this. the ground to do his heavy kick make it even harder to use the very very fast peripheral vision style reactions that we use to help us end here. Rashid's literal storm fired reactions and relatively complex neutral are what make up the core of this kata. And the full focus test mode, of course, minimum amount of strain. Because now you have to think about can you actually do all of this in time against a character who will absolutely, unlike some of our other characters, who will absolutely just win. If you are trying to win on Rashid by just punishes, it often does not matter how strong your punish is because of the amount of times you get to do it. If you restrict yourself to punishing only those things mentioned, or like some of his minus two moves, it's very difficult to get much damage on this character without being good at the kata and the required parts. And when you do manage to beat him, it's very obvious when you manage to do it by doing the wrong thing. Add to this the fact that you have a certain amount of pressure to get out of the corner, but actually it's a motions be done. Rashid will quickly show you why you can't just do what you want, and when you beat him by doing the wrong thing, it's really obvious. However, since the team has informed me that 
the audio has somehow become basically untenable for this particular stream. I simply suggest that you get the rest of your information on this kata on Sunday, as this has covered most of it. Therefore, we apologize for the poor audio, and we'll be attempting to figure out if there's a way to resolve that. And we'll be considering this particular Disguidance stream to be at its end. Hopefully, it helps you use or come up with a new training regimen for your anti-airs and other things. And as always, get to improve. This has been Ryan for two underscore mk join us next week for lead up to combo breaker practice in street fighter mishmashing lounge and guilty gear as well along with some content not street fighter, on what else we sing on wednesday we may move kame house lobbies to that but don't And if you're going to Combo Breaker, see you there. Good night, everyone.